Hello, fans, clan, and all the rest of you. It's the Bearded Broker coming live from Musselburgh for another week of the Bearded Broker Live with your Q&A. Now, before we proceed this week, I've got William, my trusty colleague here, listening in after last week's disaster with the audio quality. It was like I was permanently shouting, which I normally permanently do anyway, but uh, how's that sounding, William? Is that much better? Loud, you want it to be louder, or is that okay? Do you think that's fine? Perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Excellent. Thank you, William, as my audio engineer, video engineer for the day. Thank you, William. So, here we are with episode 9 of the Bearded Broker Live. Uh, we've got one, two, three, four questions from the First Time Buyer Help Group, and... We have got Marie from Edinburgh, we've got Sarah or Sarah from Leeds, we've got Daryl from Granton in Edinburgh, presumably, and we've got Angelica from Derby. So we're going to start off with Marie's question this week, so thank you Marie for your question. So Marie from Edinburgh asks... My partner and I are looking to buy our first home. He is on a spouse visa and just came to the UK. However, has secured a permanent job. Can we get the mortgage? And if we can, will it be more expensive? So a couple of questions there from Marie. Yes, on the whole, Marie, getting a mortgage is not going to be a problem with your partner being on a spouse visa. Some lenders have different quirks of that criteria. For those of you that don't know, uh, we are mortgage brokers. Uh, we have access to almost 100 lenders, and therefore it's almost 100 different sets of criteria. Some lenders will allow it, some lenders will not allow it, and the ones that will allow it will allow it under different variations of their rules. But on the whole, yes, that shouldn't be a problem. Will it be more expensive? No, it shouldn't be any more expensive. Lenders will either take it or they won't. They won't take it and then charge you more of a premium for that. So you should be okay with that, Marie. So hopefully you found that helpful. Marie, thank you very much for your question. If you have any other questions, please get in touch. Uh, Sarah from Leeds. So we are three friends who are, are thinking to buy a three bedroom property jointly. Is this possible? And what would be the downsides? Absolutely possible. Not a problem with that at all. Uh, I, uh, I've not bought with with two other friends previously but I did previously buy with one friend one thing that we did do in the very beginning was we set out the rules and boundaries of what was and was not able to be done within that property uh, so we set up what's called a minute of agreement and that was that we had the both of us had a an exit strategy if you like because Having the best of friends is great, but living with the best of friends might not be so great. Uh, it ends up being, you know, one of your pals to stay up much later with their and bring bringing in other friends and that sort of thing. So it can get a little bit messy. I've definitely known, known it getting messy. From a mortgage point of view, not a problem. But from a personal point of view, I would set up a minute of agreement and the rules in the very beginning. That may sound a little bit draconian, but it's trust me, it's not. With an exit in mind, being that ours was in three years' time, we will dis make a decision. Either I buy him out, or he buys me out, or we sell and we go our separate ways. And that all worked out perfectly fine, but it was all stated in the minute of agreement what we could and couldn't do within that property as well. So, absolutely fine, Sarah from Leeds. Thanks for your question, and that is absolutely not a problem. So, no downsides in the mortgage front, just really from the personal point of view, getting that part right. Daryl from Granton is asking, A friend of mine got his mortgage approved in just over 10 days, while I am waiting for an answer from the bank for more than a month. My broker is saying this is normal without giving me more details, should I worry Without knowing more, Daryl, it's difficult to say. The part that would give me a little bit of anxiety is I would want to know more from the broker. I would want to know why it's taken so long. Is the broker just not not coming back to you at all? Is he or she telling you that, yes, we need more of this or more of that? Or 
we need more documents and pay slips and that sort of thing? Or is the lender just taking ages to, to make a decision because it's take, you know, they're, they're taking 10 days to get to the documents that you've sent in, then they ask another question, they take another 10 days. So I would never ever compare apples with apples when it comes to mortgages that your, your friend might have gone with a, a lender with different criteria and it's just been much quicker and your circumstances, I don't know what your circumstances are. Different lenders operate in different ways. For me, I'd be getting back to your broker and saying, can you tell me what's going on? I need to know why it's taken the length of time. Our philosophy, our service level agreement with you as a client is we update you every three days on what's going on with your case. Even if we've got nothing to tell you, we'll let you know that you know nothing, nothing new has happened, but we will uh, operate on a now and next philosophy of that's what we've done now and this is what we're doing next and when we're doing that for you. Because we know the anxiety that goes into every mortgage application. We've all been on the other side of that when we're getting our own mortgages, so we understand and we can empathise with the whole situation. So uh, absolutely, Daryl, I would speak to your broker and say, please tell me what's going on. Angelica from Derby. So Angelica is asking, uh, what life insurance is it best to have? We have been recommended income protection also. So we are mortgage and insurance planning experts. So we'll help you set up your mortgage. We will also help you set up your insurance as well. So Angelica, it depends on your own individual circumstances. No, no two clients are the same. So if you're a single person or if you're a couple or you're a couple with kids or you're a single applicant with children, all these sorts of things. So life insurance is important, but depending on your circumstances, critical illness insurance might be more important or protecting your income may be even more important. Arguably, the most important is your income is protected. Now, so it's really going to depend on your own personal circumstances and what your makeup is. For, for for ourselves, what I tend to do is I'll sit down with a client, talk over their mortgage with them, and I will talk over their personal circumstances, and then we'll decide what, what protection or insurance is most important first. So what's the top of the tree, and do we have the budget to get you income protection in that example? Do we then have the budget to get you some critical illness cover and life insurance? So depending on your circumstances, it would depend, but definitely worth having a look at, definitely worth uh, taking up a recommendation, and it will depend on what your circumstances are. So that is it from the Bearded Broker this week. So thanks again to Marie, Sarah, Daryl, and Angelica for your questions. If you're a first-time buyer or you're looking to sell your house and buy a new home and you're looking at some mortgage advice, please just give us a shout. We'll happily answer any questions. Even if you're dealing with another broker, we don't mind. We're just trying try to create content that anyone can use. And as a whole, everyone gets more educated in how this whole process works. But if you've got any questions, we are here. So it's Ross Stese, the bearded broker, coming from Musselburgh. Uh, and if you've got any questions for next week, please let us know and we'll do our best to answer them. Follow us on Facebook, follow us on YouTube, on Twitter, and we'll see you again soon. So thanks very much. See ya.